Elevate your form building experience with Quill Forms. On this video, we're going to cover key features and integrations. So follow me to my desktop right now. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Quill Forms and it's going to allow you to create forms, surveys, and quizzes in a conversational form style. That means that we don't have to have a daunting form where everything is in one single place. These are definitely the best route to take, especially when you have several questions to be asked. Because when you see a bunch of questions in one single form, you just definitely run away. So conversational forms are a fantastic way to take your forms to the next level. Now, the idea of Quill Forms is to give you a builder that really satisfies your needs. Now they have two types of systems available. You got the SaaS version, which is the studio version in this case, and the WordPress versions. Both have a lot of power, both have the main features, but there's little subtle differences that you need to consider when you need to decide what type of platform you want to decide to use. Now, Studio Version is a fantastic way to use because it's in the SaaS, they take care of everything, it's cloud-based, you share a link or you embed on a website and you're good to go. On the other hand, you have the WordPress version that allows you to have more control and you are the one handling the data. And those are the key differences from these two platforms. There's subtle differences too when it comes to embedding a, a form on your WordPress site and those kind of things, but I'll show you that in a bit, okay? So let's jump over to our two versions. So this one is the SaaS version and basically everything's already ready to go and ready to use in this version. When it comes to the WordPress version, we have add-ons. That means that they don't load up your WordPress site with a bunch of things that you might not need. So it gives us the option for us to activate what we want to use and deactivate what we don't want to use. So it's a great option to have. Plus you have your backend on the WordPress, you got your plugins, you got your website, all the details and tools, etc., for your site as you would normally. But if you jump into Quill Forms, you jump into the platform where you are going to build your forms. So it's a fantastic way to use, right? Now, let's actually jump into one of these forms to see what we can do because we want to find out what are the key features and the integrations. So let's jump over to create a new form. In this case, I am going to choose a template. And yes, they do have several templates available. In this case, I particularly like this one, which is the job application form. So I'm going to select it. I am going to use this form, but yes, you can test it out before actually using it, okay? So in this case, let's go ahead and use it. And it's gonna take us to our Quill Forms Builder. And this is where the magic happens. And the first feature that I want to show you is the group of blocks that they've just implemented. So let me show you how that works. We have this demo example form where we have the step form or the conversational form per se. And each one of these elements is presented to you one by one. But what if we wanted to present several questions in each one of these steps? That is possible with this new feature that's called block groups or well, group blocks in this case. We're gonna use it by clicking on this add button and we're gonna find this new question here that says group. So let's go ahead and select it. Let's bring it inside of here. And we want to bring in the questions that we want to bring into this group, okay? So first off, let's go ahead and add the name, the email, and we're gonna get rid of this one that was added by default, okay? So we now have two questions in this block, okay? So that means that it doesn't have to be one by one of these questions. We can, we can group these questions, okay? So we have two questions right here and we can also make these more compact. So in case you want to add more questions and you don't want to fill out the whole screen, it is possible. So to do that, we are going to select the first question, which is the one that's asking for the name. And we have this option right here that says with. So we have full width, which is what you're viewing right now. There's the half width, which brings it to the left. And there's the one third if we want to add three of these questions, okay? So in this case, let's do the half width. And then we're gonna do the same with the email. So again, we're, we selected the email now. We're gonna use half width and it took it to the top. So now we have two questions in a row. And same thing is possible with one third and we can add three questions in one single row. Now this is particularly useful when you want to have a compact form, okay? So again, let me go ahead and do have with, and now we have this question. So we have this first group, and yes, we can add more groups and create the same situation that we saw right here. Now you want to use this for questions that are short. You don't wanna use it for a long form question, for example, because that's gonna take up a lot of space and you wanna use that space, especially for long forms. You wanna give them space to actually type in. So it's just an idea to use for simple questions, this group blocks, but you can use it however you like, okay? Now, another thing that I want to show you is the amount of questions that they have available to create our conversational forms. So if we click on the plus button, there's several options available here to ask questions, all the way from opinion scale, short 
text, calendar picker, drop down, website statements, and all these are really useful. And one of the ones that I'm gonna show you that is one of my favorites that they've just launched is the partial submission point. This one is a key feature, okay? So let me go ahead and add it right now and let me show you how this works. So you can see here, here it's just been added right here, which is a partial submission point. That means that if someone fills out the form up to this point, it's gonna partially submit it in case they don't finish the form. So we'll have the details up until that point. So if we wanna do it all the way up to this section, if someone fills it out and doesn't finish the rest of the questions, we'll get the details. So I'm going to leave it up here just to give it a use case. So once we get the name and the email, and if they don't finish any of these questions, they don't wanna respond it, we will get the partial submitted responses in case they don't submit it. Now be aware of this details right here. So the privacy considerations, pause this, read it if you want, okay? So how is this going to work? Let's go ahead and publish this. Now let's go into share, and we're gonna grab this to open it up in incognito mode. So let's grab the direct link, copy it, incognito mode, and we are gonna partially submit this form. Okay, here we go, let's get started. Let me go ahead and just add some details here for testing purposes. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, I've added a few more responses here and we stop. Let's just say that, you know what, it's just too many questions. I don't wanna respond to the rest and I'm good to go. All right, so let's head on out of here. I am going to close this. And since we added the partial submission point, we are gonna have the results up until the point that we added this, okay? So let's view results. Here we go, we have responses here and we have this one that says partial. That means that they dropped out, right? Now, what do we get with this? Well, since we added it up until this point where the email is, we got the name and we got the email. The rest of the responses were not submitted since we added it until this point. So you, knowing that you will add this partially submitted in the correct point that you want to have it. So in this case, you will see that I have it here. First name, email, and we wanna partially submit this. But what if we wanna grab a little bit more information? Well, we can drop it down here. Now be aware that if they drop off before this, then it won't partially submit. So take into consideration where you want to place that partially submitted feature. Now, also in that sense, we get more details when it comes to the results. Now in results, we're gonna be able to view the results that you just saw right now, but we're also going to get insights and analyze results. So let me show you the insights. In the insights, we're gonna have a quick overview of everything that's going on with our form, all the way up to total visits, unique visitors, form stats, submissions, completion rate, average time, and we have the information here. For example, we have the drop-off rate, and it's happening right here. Since I've only opened this once, and I'm the one who dropped it off in this section, it gave me 100%. But these analytics will help you analyze the form to know what's going on. Maybe you need to modify your form. Maybe it's too long. Maybe you're asking a question that is too personal and people are dropping off and you have to consider that to tweak your form. So these results will help you with that, all right? Then we have the analyzed results. Let me fill this out once so you can see how it's going to view. Okay, so now I have this filled out twice. Let me go ahead and refresh it so you can see how it's going to preview. And I am the same user, so unique visitor should be one only. So let's go ahead and view this. Let's go to insights. Okay, here we go, total visits, one unique visitor. And then we have more details here, right? Now, let's view the analyze results. And in this section, we have the results of everything that's going here in chart mode, display option, we can change the charts. And there's a key feature that lets you add a filter. So in this filter, we have options, for example, for the score feature, where we're able to view, for example, if it's greater than, and we'll say number five, then we're going to apply the filter and view the results that are greater than five. So it helps us filter that out. So it's a great option to view the responses, insights, and analyze results here. And yes, it is available on the SaaS version and on the WordPress version. Now, in terms of design, another key feature that I want to show you is the theme feature. So in design, we have the new theme here. So I'm able to create one and build my theme that I can start using. So I'll call this theme test. I can set my background. I can set my logo, font families. I can change the colors. I can also change typography, spacing, and we can do borders. So once you set up that, you can create a brand new theme right here that you can start using. So it's super easy to use this. So if you're considering changing the theme style, this is a great option. Now in terms of conditional logic, so let's jump into logic. And in logic, there's two of these available. One is jump logic and the other one is calculator. So let me show you jump logic. 
jump logic, what it's going to do is apply conditional logic to jump to a certain section if you set that up. So right here, let me give you a quick example of how to use this. So for example, we have a question here that is asking for the rating from one to 10. So what do we wanna do? Once they rate here, and if they rate a certain rate, we're gonna send them all the way up to the end to submit, okay? Now let's set this up. So I'm going to say that if the score in this section is, and in this case, I'm gonna choose lower than, and I'm going to say five, let's go ahead and save this, and we're good to go. How is this going to work? Okay, so if they are going to rate five or lower, it's gonna take them automatically all the way to submit. We don't, we're not going to ask them any more questions because let's just say hypothetically saying that these people are not happy, all right? So we'll skip them all the way to submit. And it's just an idea of how you can use this, okay? Let me show you how it works. Let's go ahead and publish this. Here we go, let me preview it. And let's get started here. Let me go ahead and just type in test stuff. Here we go. Let's go ahead and continue, continue, continue. And let me show you right here. If I rate five and lower, it'll take me to submit and finish off. So let me go ahead and click four. I'm going to submit this. And it took us straight to the end as it was intended. So that's how conditional logic and jump logic is going to work. Now, the other conditional logic that I want to show you is the calculator. So if you want to use a calculation in a field, this is the way to go. So let me go ahead and select this one that's a one to the 10, for example. I'm gonna select logic, I'm gonna use calculator, and I'm able to use a calculation rule. So for example, if I had a calculator here for the score, saying that if it's going to add, subtract, divide, and multiply, depending on the, on the number, I can do a calculation here. And yes, I can also set point base for this too. For example, for the responses for this particular question, I can say, you know what, if someone selects Python, I'm going to give them 20 points. If they select PHP, then maybe five points. And then I can decide at the end to view the results and see which one scored the most points or consider that person if this was a job application, for example, based on the score that they've selected that they have experience with. So that's the way you can use calculation. Now, when it comes to finishing up and you want to share this, well, that's where things change a bit when it comes to the WordPress version and the SaaS version. So in this case, we are viewing the WordPress version and I also want to show you side by side the, the SaaS version. So again, let's go to share. And we have three options on the SaaS version, which is sharing this via a direct link. We have the embed code to embed on any site that we want. And we have the QR code straight to scan and take us to our survey quiz or form that you've just built. That's for the SaaS version. Now, when it comes to the WordPress version, there's two features that are different. So you got the same ones here. And then we have the short code, which will let you embed this form in any part of the WordPress site, which is super useful because it's just super easy to implement it in any section of your website. And the other option is the pop-up. We're able to create pop-ups to use on our WordPress site straight from here. So it's just the difference between the short options with the WordPress version and the SaaS version. And when it comes to the integrations, let's go ahead and check these out. We're gonna go into the settings and in the settings, we'll be able to view the integrations. So we got our payment integrations, which is the ones they have right now as of this video. You got the most popular ones, which is Stripe, PayPal, Authorized Square, and all these. And then there's the email integration. There's the integrations for other applications. And this is the list that's available as of this video. There's the reCAPTCHA, and there's the tracking integration that's available here. And when it comes to the SaaS version, there's also integrations. We're gonna go into settings. We'll be able to view the payment integrations, email, integrations for the rest of the applications and tracking and analytics integrations. So all these available in the SaaS and the WordPress version. Now, at the end of the day, both of these are fantastic platforms. It's just up to you what you want to decide and use depending on your use case. So I would say that if you want to have more control over your form and surveys and quizzes, I would choose WordPress and that's if you have a WordPress site. And if you want to decide hassle-free, you don't want to worry about the site being up or building it in a WordPress site, then I recommend the SaaS version, the studio version that they have on Quill Forms. So I definitely recommend that you check out Quill Forms. Link we provided in the description. And that's a wrap.